I want to urge everybody in this service, look at your neighbor, and your neighbor look at them in the eye and tell the neighbor, are you fasting 21 days? Pause right there and get an answer from them. Are they saying yes? Are they saying no? Are they looking at you in the eye with a surprised look? Now finish that sentence and tell them you require sacrifice with your prayers. You see the way you whisper. People do not understand spiritual principles and therefore they are still being broken. The day you understand the principle I am teaching you, you will be amazed by the things God will work in your life. I pray that in this season, you will not just pray, you will also slap the altar by your sacrifices. Seven days by seven days. You cannot say amen right there. Amen. But somewhere somebody is taking your money and putting it on the evil altar. Let's talk about Old Testament. Numbers 23, verse number 1. Open your Bible there. Numbers 23, verse number 1. Divine prophets. 
and there are satanic prophets. The divine prophet has been given the mandate that they shall bless. The satanic prophet, their work is to make sure the child of God has been stolen. The work is to make sure men are headed nowhere and they are multiplied. The evil prophets are multiplied everywhere on this earth. They are everywhere. That's why I say to you, in your family, they are right there. It may not be in your immediate family, but if we took a good search on your extended family, you will be surprised that some of the people you are thinking are for you, they are the same ones who are being used to fight against you. Glory to God. Tonight, may God help your life. Amen. You see the story of an evil prophet, a sorcerer named Balaam, a diviner, a man that had been already practicing in a certain way. And so a king not named Balaam discovered that there are strong people that are coming up. And these people are able to overcome me, overcome my kingdom, they are able to overturn everything that we've been doing. Those people, they must be stopped. So Balak begins to hire Balaam and says, We know very well, you can cast, and whoever you cast is cast. Whoever you bless is blessed. So I want you to cast a certain people for me. And as you're seated here tonight under the sound of my voice, there are those who have been hired already to cast your life. They've been hired already to cast your destiny. They've been hired already to cast your family. And sometimes also it's not about who has been hired, but it's already what cast is already standing now as I'm speaking to you. Tonight is the night the cast must be broken. Amen. Tonight is the night the cast must be reversed. Amen. I thank God for Israel because for them they were already blessed. So that when the evil prophet arrived, they could not be able to cast them. They could only speak the blessing. God did not allow that the prophet would speak negative words over the people of Israel. But he said, Balaam, you will bless the people. They are a blessed people. You cannot cast them. But you see, many times when we come to the law, the evil prophet has already had an open door so that they can cast the life of the child of God. And so, as you see here right now, sometimes in a generation, from one generation to another, the curse has been functioning because it has been delivered down by evil prophets. Tonight, it doesn't matter whether the prophet has been buried, the curse will be located wherever it was established, and it must break the name of Jesus. Ah, uh, your amen this week, I say tonight, your amen must be strong, tonight your faith must be up there, glory to God. Amen. You must not be speaking as if you are suggesting that let us leave these prophets alone, they are doing their business. Is that what you are saying tonight? No. Are you ready to condone anybody tonight? No. Are you ready to condone the ones who are fighting you tonight? No. Carry fire in your spirit. Carry violence, holy violence in your spirit. Understanding that I must recover what belongs to me. Look, if Benham had cast these people because the Lord does not allow him to speak any negative word, but if he had cast them, then the people would have been cast. Hallelujah. The man knew a principle. He knew how to get the words to work in their lives. He knew how to give the instruction for what will stop the lives of the people of Israel. It's funny that the people in the world, they understand more than we understand in the church. It's funny that satanic prophets and people who serve those altars, they can understand more than we understand in the church. And because of that, Hosea chapter 4, number 6 is still activated. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Tonight, let knowledge come to your heart so that you will not be destroyed when others are being destroyed. You will be helped. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Amen. If the people of Israel had been walking in sin, Balaam would have been able to cast them. We see that Balaam says the people, they are already walking in righteousness. They are already blessed and covered. I can't cast them. But we see Balaam say, if you want me to cast these people, because Balak was very mad, he said, if you want me to cast them, then entice the people that they should sin. And once they want me sin, I shall be able to cast them, because then there shall be an open door. Hallelujah. So tonight, as you seated here, you may be saying, it says in my own Bible, same book of Numbers, Let's read 23 and verse 23. For there is no sorcerer.
sorcery against Jacob, nor any divination against Israel. It must now be said of Jacob and of Israel, Oh, what God has done! This is a very good and wonderful verse. Sometimes, as God's beloved people, we quote it very much. We say, no sorcery against Jacob, no divination against Israel. But I want someone to understand that if there is an open door of sin, either in your life or in your family, it is possible to be cast. Are you hearing this word? Bela says, if you can entice them to sin, and you entice them, and when they fell into sexual sin, immediately Bela said, now is the opportunity, I can cast the people. But eventually, as he is busy casting them, God had said, you shall not cast these people, or daily that the man should die, and therefore the man died in the battle. Hallelujah. Tonight, the pillar in your family must perish. Amen. Thank you for that little amen. You are encouraging them. Tonight, the evil prophet in your generation, they must perish. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, my father, my father. Arise. arise. Every diviner Every assigned to cast my destiny, wherever they are, Diviners have already operated upon your life. They have already operated upon your family. They have already worked in that things, even as you see it here. Some of the things that belong to you may be in the pocket of the divine. Some of them may be in the belly of the divine. As I prayed over many people's lives, I've encountered, encountered the works of these diviners. If you are still wondering what diviners you're talking about, the witch in your family, the witch doctor, the wizard, all these are diviners because divination is any attempt to reach to the realm of the spirit and draw power, draw revelation, any kind of knowledge without using the spirit of God. And that means all the suckers you know from any sermon or any person who is not under the spirit of God, it is all the works of divination. And that means they are diviners. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and tell the neighbor, Amen. as sanctified as you look like, diviners have already operated in your family. You are in the right service. Hallelujah. Tonight, let the Spirit of God begin to discover the works of this house that they must be destroyed. But as I'm praying over many people, some of them, their wealth has been collected. And I pray over people, and, and, and the diviner will say, I am, I have been sitting on their wealth in my coffin. So here you are, you're saying, My father, what is my wealth? You are hard working. You do everything that you ought to do, but still your life is headed nowhere. Tonight, whoever has been sitting on the watch is yours. Thunder will locate them. Amen. I said, Thunder will locate them. Amen. They will have to let go of what belongs to you. Amen. Amen. On your employment, thunder is coming to them. Amen. Anyone sitting on your marriage, thunder is coming to them. Amen. Anyone sitting on your ministry, thunder is coming to locate them. Amen. Anyone sitting on your finances, thunder shall locate them tonight. Amen. Anyone who says that your children will not be born, ah, thunder is coming to them. Amen. Because sometimes the devil will say, only up to here, but not anymore. I pray for this woman. And uh, she was part of the church and actually part of the, the, the ministers in the house. But the enemy had decided that you will not be able to have any further children. She had one child, very uh, beautiful girl, but no more than that. The enemy had said no further children for this one. But God had determined that somebody else must be born. So the dream was saying there's going to be other children. But reality was saying no children. After prayer began, the powers that were holding the womb of the woman. Ah, uh, the Lord began to locate them and began to shake them up. And as soon as the prayers were done, no sooner had we closed our eyes and opened our eyes, lo, there was somebody who was expectant. A 
I'm speaking to somebody, there's a generation that may be held from you. The, gener the generation shall be born in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody say, my family, my, family. my generation, my generation. Must, come forth. must come forth by fire, by, fire. by force, by in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Look, if God has obeyed, can you imagine that you will have three children, you only have one, but God obeyed that the third born is the one who shall be president. And therefore, the third one is not born. What has happened? You have missed out. Is that also? If David's family, the father had gotten down by child number seven and forgot to give back to a man called David, would we have, be having a king in Israel by the name of David? I want you to understand that the works of these powers, it extends much further because they can see there's someone coming to this family. They will deliver the family. Therefore, I say, anyone who's stopping your generation from being born, they will have to let go in Jesus' name. Amen. That's why if the dream is telling you you have seven children, you need to prepare yourself very well. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Look at your name and tell them, prepare yourself. Amen. Giving God a repentance and saying, my father, I have already purpose. I shall have two children. Because according to prevailing standards, Two children are okay, a boy and a girl, I am okay. A family told me, man of God, we shall not now have any further children because by our decision, we have completed that chapter. Yet I said to them, the Lord has said, you shall have another one son. They said, man of God, we are careful about the matter, we shall not have this child because this is the plan. We put all the plans, family plan. And I said to them, well, what the Lord has said is what the Lord has said. If indeed it was the Lord, it shall be. Lo and behold, there came a time when as I encountered them, the new good news, that is to me, good news was delivered. We do not understand what happened, but as it is, right now we are expecting somebody else is on the way. God said this one shall be a prophet. And therefore the prophet was born. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Who can tell you the neighbor? Amen. You can plan. Amen. But the plans of the Lord Amen. will prevail. Now I want somebody to understand a few things that these satanic prophets work by. Because we see Balaam establishing seven altars. And from the altar, the intent was that there are powers that are supposed to come from the altar. And the powers were meant to oppress the people of Israel. Only that the Lord God said, none of your powers will speak. I am the one who will speak because God stands over every power on the earth. And if God said it cannot be, it cannot be. Somebody missed a place to shout a good hallelujah. Because when the devil wanted to touch Job, God said you cannot touch him. And until the devil begged for permission, God said, I have given him permission. That means no power can touch your life without permission from heaven. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Nothing happens except the Lord allows it. So God stopped Balaam from cursing these people because there was no right. There was no open door. There was no legal right for them to be cursed. So you cannot curse the people because they are blessed. But the altars were in position. An altar is a place of communion. It's a place where spirits come to receive what men have brought to offer to them. That's why if you are a part of this house and nothing speaks for you on this altar, you are not laying anything on this altar, or what you lay on this altar is very weak, there is not much that heaven can do for you. Hallelujah. See, I can't get no right there. Amen. I still preach. I know the word is coming through. Look at your neighbor, tell the neighbor. Yeah. If you are offering on the altar is weak. If you are offering on the altar, see the way you're dragging your tongue. Look at your neighbor, neighbor. neighbor. If, the, if you are offering on the altar is weak. Do not expect much upon your life. Are you understanding this word? Yes. I am blessing your life today yes. by this word. Yes. I'm helping your life today by this word. Yes. Because, you know, many times you don't understand. We think we come to church and God just does whatever we want him to do in our lives. And therefore, you wait for a long time. Nothing happened in your life. Nothing is done for you. You wonder, where is this God? The tone is 
Basically, they didn't tell you that you need to have a representation on the altar and it needs to be strong enough. Glory to God. Amen. Bear and says to Baal, prepare me seven altars. Somebody say seven altars. Seven altars. If I ask you now, you bring seven offerings to this church. I say, everybody prepare seven offerings. And all of them, they are sacrifices. Will you do according to that word? Or you say, you see that man of God is uh, according to the men that I was telling you about. I don't know the ones you talk about, but you must be having some to talk about. Most people do not understand that as you take something from your life and lay it upon the altar, suddenly what is on the altar begins to speak for you. And if you have nothing on the altar, nothing is speaking for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't you, don't you neighbor, ask the neighbor, neighbor, what is speaking in your behalf tonight? Glory to God. If you can learn the secret of the altar, you will silence the powers of darkness. If you can learn the secret of the altar, you will unlock the power of God. Balaam, Balak, as they stand on the altar and they offer all of these things, suddenly God begins to speak and bring over somebody's life in this season of 21 days. As you lay things on this altar, may the voice of God suddenly begin to speak over your life. Yeah. Do you know you can take things and put it on this altar and when you go home, God speaks to you as if a man is speaking to you. Are you understanding me? You hear a literal voice that is speaking to you because when God sends his angels to speak to you, many of you have not known because the voice of an angel is like the voice of a man. Did you get that? It's like the voice of a man. So when they speak to you, you will feel as if somebody has spoken to you. But exactly what you heard is what the angel has been saying to you. Some people will say, what was that? I don't understand. Some will say, I think there's a demon in this house. I bind it. Okay. So you cannot even discern when angels are in your vicinity. Now, these satanic prophets, they require an altar because there needs to be a priest, there needs to be an altar, yeah. there needs to be a sacrifice, yeah. then there shall be a covenant by which power can move upon the lives of men. Are you hearing this one? What I have just said to you, apply in the kingdom of darkness and it applies in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, as it is right now, there is a priest. There is an altar. But the problem is, where is the sacrifice? People come to God like it's a boba. Like they are suggesting, I would like to give you some things. Wrong approach. Come to neighbor, tell the wrong approach. Come to God like it's very valuable and collect something valuable in your hands and give it to God because you are saying, My life must change. My life has changed. The altar must be. Some people put a blade on the altar, it can only produce a whisper. There's nothing that can happen for you because there's nothing on the altar to speak to. Therefore, the life is still struggling because if they are raising serious altars in the kingdom of darkness, how shall there be a voice to speak for you in God's kingdom when your altar is very weak? Therefore, every day the devil will be laughing. Somebody will be saying, man of God, I went into a fast and I determined I shall not be eating in the dream. Okay, you said you will not be eating in the dream. Because you said it, does that mean you will not eat? No. Because if there are altars that are speaking in your family, because the altars of the ancestral spirits are very key to make sure you are fed in that your dream. If you are always eating in the dream, you know that your ancestors are still alive. I thank God you have come to this service. You are in the right service. This is the service that gives ancestral spirits. Amen. It's the service that makes sure they will not appear anywhere. Amen. They will not be dragging you to the village. Why are you still being dragged to the village? Is that where you live? You are here in the city, but in your dream, you are in the village. 
You are here in the city, in the daytime you eat baka, in the nighttime you eat your traditional food. Why? Because the altar you have raised, it is a weak altar. I challenge somebody to slap the altar so many times with what is known as a sacrifice and watch what heaven is about to do in your life. I am speaking to somebody, a ship is coming to your life. Amen. Aha, the Lord is sending change to your life. Amen. You will be amazed by the mighty hand of God. Amen. So, Peter, after the altar has been raised, it begins to cast. I will start today and I believe this is a series of prayers that we are going to have to do. Glory to God. Amen. Look at your name and tell them, prepare yourself. Prepare this yourself. one, as long as God puts bread in me, I will be relentless on this one. We will tap on it until it has been fully dealt with. And I want to ask somebody, don't miss any of the series of the next Fridays that are coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I want to make sure you have taken total victory over the enemy. Amen. As I'm speaking to you right now, there are orders that have been established in your family by prophets such as this parent. And they have been seriously speaking to make sure you are heading nowhere. I will unveil them to you one after the other. I will unveil the words to you one after the other. Until you are fully understood, then it will be up to you to pray and destroy them. Glory to God. Amen. Number one altar, they have raised, and they raised in almost every family. It's something called the family shrine. Family shrine. Most of you, as you are seated here, these kind of shrines have been there. Like I said, the altar is something that is a place where you bring something precious to you. You bring it so that the spirits can observe what you have laid upon the altar. It looks a little bit easy right there. It's not very serious. I will be honest with you. In this church, we act like the Lord Jesus. Glory to God. You are scared of me looking at your offering, but the Lord Jesus looked at everybody's offering. And then he said, the widow. The widow has done very, very well. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. The altar, you bring what is precious to you so that when the Spirit sees what you've laid upon it, it says, I have accepted it. And because I've accepted it, now whatsoever you want shall be done for you. Family is right. Almost every family, they have had those who have gone to the diviner, the evil prophet, the witch doctor, the sorcerer. And they say, this and that you shall do. Some families, they have been given a carving. The carving has been taken and put somewhere in a certain corner of the family. Some have had gadgets that have been given. If you are a driver or if you've driven with people, you have known that people will put some, something that looks like an altar somewhere towards the front of that car. Am I right? And you can tell there's something about what I'm looking at. Am I speaking to you? Okay, you are all sanctified. You are all angels. You don't see these kind of things. Your eyes will be open. Do not worry. Some families, and you might have heard of them, they have a, they're given a container. I've prayed over many people have been given a container that has a stone inside. Somebody say a stone. Yes, and water is put inside. And they're told, okay, every day you will put water and everybody will drink from the same thing. Have you heard of that? Have you heard of it? You have not heard of it. Now you're hearing of it. Some, as you may know, they have the serpent that is rumored to be present in that family. Some, as you know, it, in their own dream lives, the serpent is very much alive. It's always a huge serpent that is pursuing after them. These are shrines that are dedicated to this house. Because remember, that shrine by itself, it speaks of an altar. Somebody said altar. Where powers are supposed to step from the realm of the spirit and come to impact the ones who are living in the physical. Because of these kind of shrines, as you may know them, sometimes the shrine can even be a child in that family. A 
think you will now relate to this one. That sometimes the firstborn, they are not able to work very well with their own brain. It's like a brain dead, like a cabbage brain, and you can say there are certain afflictions where this one is not allowed to be educated, and even if they go to school, they cannot make anything important in life. It's right, it's in that child. But when you look at the family, they are doing very well, but there is someone who's not doing well within that family. Are you understanding? Almost every family has a shrine. This one will have this type. The other one will have the other type. Tonight as we pray, you must destroy the shrine that is in your family. Amen. You must destroy the altar that is in your family. Ah, uh, come on somebody. I want you to understand that in your own family, I'm not talking about another one, in your own family, if it's not done by your parents, it's your grandparents. If it's not done, there's another one. But somebody opened the door that powers can walk in and they can begin to afflict. Tonight, you must, dis you must destroy it. Amen. You must bring it into pieces. Amen. Oh, glory, 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 glory to God. Amen. I pray that the Holy Ghost is opening your eyes to see exactly what has been done. The man named Gideon was sold. Go ahead and destroy the altar of the Father's house. It was an altar built unto Baal. So that now God can be with him. Tonight, those evil altars are coming down. Amen. Because of the family shrine, the family altar. You will find certain problems that are in that family. They must always pursue the people who are present in that family. As I'm speaking to you, you understand very well certain problems that are pursuing your own family. We are coming to deal with them. Amen. Number two. This same satanic priest will use body parts to ensure they have raised their own orders so they can cast the lives of God's people. Because I want you to understand that every one of the altars I am mentioning, their purpose is to make sure your life has been cast and you're headed nowhere. Tonight, may God deliver you from the cast. Tonight, may God break the cast that has been on your family. Tonight, may you overturn what has been done to your generation. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Sometimes a child is born and they will collect the placenta or a piece of the placenta and they will keep it in self storage. So, somebody, as you're sitting here right now, your placenta may very well be used to stop your life, stop your destiny. God will locate it tonight. Amen. Anyone? using your placenta to manipulate the person, tonight the fire will come to them. Amen. Your event needs to be stronger than that. Amen. Some of them, they will take your nails and they will take them to those altars. Some of them will cut a little bit of the hair and put it on the altar. And therefore some of you may say, when you woke up, some piece of hair was missing somewhere. Or, as you are busy upon your life as a child, somebody came and shaved some of your hair and they took it to the altars. And they will take this and they will take that and they will lay it upon the altars. So they may utter curses against the life of the child of God. Any evil priest that did this to you, tonight is their night to be arrested. Amen. Number three, photographs. Photographs. And this is one of the most serious works by which the kingdom of darkness has been busy making sure they have raised this kind of altars against the lives of God's children. I prayed for this young lady a couple of years back. While I prayed for her, God revealed that certain photos have been collected by diviners because the diviner may tell you, go and bring me a photo of your family. Somebody read your heart is beginning to thump faster, saying, oh my God, I gave somebody a photo. Yes, I'm talking about that. So she took the photo and delivered it to the divine. But later on, she discovered it's a divine. And now she could not be able to retrieve the photo. But the divine was busy saying, she must die. She must die. And while the divine is saying that, the woman is feeling as if she needs to take her life. And unless she had encountered Deliverance ministers, 
there is no way her life would be rescued. By the power of deliverance, today she is still alive. They say she will not study, she will go nowhere. Whatsoever she has studied for, it will not help her. When she arrived and saw me, she told me, I feel like I want to die. I said to her, you will not die. Wherever they took that your photo, the fire of God will come to them. And they will have to let you go. So you may be seated here. And somewhere, somebody is conversing with a photograph that has come from you. That is why it's not good to distribute your photos everywhere. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I speaking to you? Yes. Because I'm telling you wisdom, now your heart is shaking. No, listen to this very well. You cannot be scattering your photos everywhere because some of the people who are interested in them, they are only interested to make sure they have cast your life. Say, my father. My father. My father. My father. Wherever my photos were taken. Hallelujah. So in this way, this 
Satanic prophets have been able to cast the people of God to not believe upon God that whatsoever they may to represent you, it shall be set on fire. Amen. How many times tells me? I have example upon example upon example of so many people are prayed for. And the Lord showed it to me that it's not just a bondage in their lives, but there is something somewhere representing them that must be set on fire. Tonight, fire is coming upon their altars. Amen. Fire is coming upon the works. Amen. They will have to let you go. Amen. Say it's my time. To go free. go free in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Shout the mighty amen. amen. I have only now begun. Today is only the introduction. Rise in your feet. It's time to pray. Power to fight and win. Power to fight and win. Fall upon me now. Fall upon me now. In the name of Jesus. May you receive the power tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. May you receive the power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, glory, glory to God. As your hand is lifted, say, I demand it. I demand it. Every satanic priest. Every satanic priest. Minister in the evil altar. Minister in the evil altar. For my sake. For my sake. Oh, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? And see thunder fire of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 
Jesus. Yes. Yes. And I demand it. You can give a whole altar. Holding my possession. Hold my possession. Break up my fire. Break up my fire. and begin to pray. I want you to pray in your struggles. I want you to pray every breath of the comes upon your heart. I want you to pray and smile to the wives of the prophet. Can you be mine right now? Every prophet. I see my destiny. I hear your second is over. I command you whatever you are. I pray you. Thank <laughs> you. 
by my divine armor. Divine armor. I dismantle every evil altar. Pray, Pray. 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 Pray.
Rwanda, I take back my family, I take back my 